Hello, my name is Jared Ludlow, Publications Director at the BYU Religious Study Center, your weekly resource for gospel scholarship. Today I'm joined by Katie King, our social media intern, and we're going to share some possible resources that can accompany your Come Follow Me reading for September 11th through 17th, 2 Corinthians chapters 1 through 7. The first is called The Epistles of the Apostle Paul, an Overview. It's by Frank Judd, a religion faculty member here at BYU. And it comes from a volume published by the RSC called New Testament History, Culture, and Society, a Background to the Text of the New Testament. And as the title suggests, this is an overview of all of Paul's epistles. And he kind of ties in first a little context with Paul's missionary journeys and then how he will try to go back and visit these places. And when he can't visit, he'll write epistles. And so that leads to discussing them. Uh, Katie, anything stand out to you from this article? Well, probably the main thing for me is just that what I learned from Paul's story, especially with how much he does after his experience on the road to Damascus, it's really just how you see that conversion is the beginning of our discipleship, right? It's not the end. I know sometimes we can think, oh, conversion is the goal and then I'm done. But really, we see what I learned from Paul is that he's converted and then he's still doing those daily things where he constantly talks about how he is in Christ or of Christ. And I think about that as continually working every day to renew our covenants with God or to do the little things that help us come closer to Christ. And that's really what the, when the work begins. Conversion is when the work begins, not when it ends. That's a great point. Cause yeah, I mean, he serves tirelessly after that yes and and that's part of the reason for all of these epistles is because he wants to continue to strengthen them to resolve problems and questions that arise and so forth and so what frank judd does in this article is rather than go uh like we have in our canonical scriptures in the king james version by order of length he discusses them by the possible chronological order we don't always know exactly when they were written um, but most biblical scholars have a certain order. And so he'll talk about Galatians and then first and second Thessalonians, first and second Corinthians, Romans, Philippians, Ephesians, Colossians, Philemon, and then first and second Timothy and Titus. I really, what I found interesting is he mentions this point that in the book of Acts, it never mentions Paul writing letters. And yet that's such a big part of our New Testament. You know, he gives out a probable reason for that is that in the book of Acts, Paul is in house arrest so people could still visit him. They could still ask him questions. He could respond to them. But when he is gone and is killed, then suddenly his writings become really important. And so it's after the apostles start passing away that their writings take on a greater and greater importance. And thankfully, we do have these letters of Paul written that he had left behind. All right, the second article is called Jesus Christ and Him Crucified, Paul's Testimony of Christ. It's by Gay Strathern, a religion faculty member here at BYU. It comes from another volume published by the RSC called Jesus Christ, Son of God and Savior. And so she starts off talking about how the only way to understand God and mortality is to come to know that Jesus Christ was and is the Redeemer of the world and that he alone had the power to change lives by redeeming individuals from the power of sin and death. And what's kind of interesting is that Paul doesn't talk a lot about his conversion experience, although that is what changed him completely. What he wants is everyone that he comes in contact with to have a similar type of conversion experience. So what did you learn from this article? Yeah, I also noticed that Paul really doesn't talk much about, or at least he himself doesn't talk much about his conversion experience, right, in his epistles. He really is very outward focused, and I think that's, to me, that is evidence of true conversion, because when we're really converted, we our focus is to share with other people and to our own conversion, but ultimately the joy that we find in Christ and to help other people feel that as well, that conversion. And that's really what I got out of the article. Great. And so Sister Strathern in this article talks about three areas of Paul's testimony of Christ. Mm -hmm. First, his testimony that Christ changes lives. Second, his testimony of the resurrection, which comes across very strong. And third, his testimony of the faith of Christ. 
And I think that was an important uh, point that she makes, is usually we think about faith in Christ, but she emphasizes that Christ needed to have faith himself, right? In the Father's plan, that he could die and resurrect himself, that he could suffer in the garden and would redeem others, and etc. And so it's not just us having faith in Christ, although that's very important, but it's also the faith of Christ. And you've mentioned a few times in our discussion here of this phrase, in Christ, and that's part of our conversion process. And so that's the part she emphasizes with Christ changing lives, is that when we're in Christ, that's when we change. That's when we have a relationship. And I liked also how you mentioned earlier that it's a process. It's not just the beginning and the end. You know, it's not an event. It's all the way along. And so Paul's teachings obviously center a lot on Christ and then our relationship with him. And I want to just end with what she says. Uh, Paul declares that our righteousness comes because of Christ's faith. It is central to Paul's testimony of Christ that he was faithful in fulfilling his part in his Father's plan. Paul's testimony to us, therefore, is that we can have faith in Christ because ultimately he has faith in his Father. This is not a principle that we should underestimate. It is the foundation for Paul and his testimony of Christ. Yes, and I think that really is very important to notice is how Christ is the perfect example of every divine quality so it makes perfect sense that Christ would have faith and so we can try to have better faith through Christ of him but also in his faith of the Father. <laughs>